When Andrea Morningstar got married, she thought she was giving her heart away on her wedding day. Except little did she know her heart was literally giving way. Tonight, a remarkable story about a woman who's alive today because of a portable mechanical heart. Our Beatrice Politi with that story. We had a great morning. The photographer came, got her hair done. Well, everything was perfect. She was just so excited and so happy and so glowing. It was on this day Andrea Morningstar and Sean Clegg pledged their love. I felt good. I felt healthy. I felt normal. But Andrea's heart was deceiving her. I got up to do the speech. I was nervous. And I remember thinking, maybe I should do this sitting down. <laughs> Shannon, the big sister, always <laughs> watching. Always trying. Oh my god. What Andrea didn't know was that her heart was slowly marching to its end. Out of nowhere, something rammed me in the chest. I just felt like I was gonna just explode. Everything from my insides was just gonna burst outside. Carol Morningstar, Andrea's mother. There was absolutely no sound. We were all terrified for her. And instead of their first dance, Sean and Andrea raced to the hospital. Go through the device, have a listen to your heart and lungs. Andrea had known for two years her heart was weak. The left side of her heart just doesn't work. Her body wasn't letting her do anything and she would sit on the couch all day and do nothing. And um, that that has been devastating to watch. Doctors had implanted a defibrillator to regulate Andrea's heart rate and fend off heart failure. It was that defibrillator that shocked her heart and knocked her down at her wedding. Andrea's doctors had hoped it was an isolated incident. But in a few short months, Andrea had all the signs of severe heart failure. Dr. Heather Ross is the medical director of the heart transplant program at Toronto's Peter Monk Cardiac Center. When Andrea came in, her life expectancy was measured in the days, hours and days. She was in cardiogenic shock, and that means that the heart, not only was there heart failure, but it had progressed to a point that without immediate intervention, uh, she would have died. Andrea, at 26, needed a new heart, but no heart was available. So doctors implanted a type of mechanical heart, a left ventricular assist device, or LVAD for short. Here's how it works. One tube attaches to the left side of the heart and drains blood from that side. And a propeller forces the blood into the aorta, which sends the blood out to the rest of the body. That metal and that motor are keeping Andrea alive, and this is the first time she's seen it all in action. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's inside me. <laughs> That's inside you. Dr. Vivek Rao implants these devices as the surgical director of the heart transplant program. So this is where the inflow is, and this is the device mm -hmm. pumping. Is that about how fast it would go inside of you? The device is rotating 8,800 RPM and flowing about 4 liters a minute. For Andrea, the LVAD is a bridge to a transplant. The purpose behind the device is, is to do the job of the heart, allow the rest of the body to recover, so that when a transplant comes, the rest of the body is in pretty much grade A shape to undergo a transplant. For years, patients with LVAD stayed in hospital awaiting transplant. But a new study has found there can be a better way. Instead of keeping people in hospital, really hooked up to IV lines and really relatively immobile, we're sending them home, they're actually recovering and uh, we can ask Andrew, but they lead pretty normal lives on the device. And once they finally get their heart transplants, they're more likely to survive. 93% of the patients sent home with their mechanical hearts were alive one year after they received their new hearts. In the hospital group, less than 50% survived that initial year after having a heart transplant. The mechanical heart not only saves lives, but costs as well. Patients generally spend an average 55 days in hospital waiting for a transplant in a critical care bed at a cost of $26,000. Yet supplies to keep the LVAD running while at home cost about $5,000. These are all the bits and pieces of technology that keep Andrea's heart ticking. They beep when batteries are low or attachments aren't secure. All of it is tethered to this tube coming out of Andrea's midsection. She jokes about a reality. Andrea is literally battery powered. She and Sean carry rechargeable batteries everywhere they go. And at night, She's hardwired. How is that for sleeping when you're attached by a cord to something? 
for the first while, I would wake up at night, at night and make sure everything is connected properly and double check and triple check. But now, pff, I don't even know what's there. <laughs> for the most part, Andrea doesn't notice the LVAD much, except for when she can feel it rubbing up against her ribs. But she considers that a minor annoyance. It's changed everything. I can walk, I can do groceries. Mm -hmm. I can um, wash dishes. I don't really want to, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> I feel normal. I feel like I'm becoming a normal person again. A mechanical heart is supposed to last eight to 10 years, but the vast majority of patients last only two to three years. In Andrea's LVAD program, 80 to 90% of patients get a heart transplant. Still, about 15% don't make it. Andrea knows she's living on borrowed time. I need to get the phone call and uh, get a new heart. That's really, for me, for now, that's the only possibility. She tries not to think about what might happen if that call never comes. I'm afraid of what's going to happen to Sean. Because when I go, I go. And I don't have to deal with it anymore. But he has to deal with it. And that's what I'm afraid of. Sean wants to make every moment count. That's why he rushed to propose. After Andrea was diagnosed, I just I didn't want to wait any longer. So, because... <laughs> I didn't know how long I'd have her. Even a transplant is not a cure for a sick heart. It's a treatment. Heart transplant recipients live on average just over a decade or so. At my age, 10 years isn't a whole lot, but it's a lot more than I would have had if I don't have a transplant. So I have to be thankful for, for what will be given to me. And just, you know, I'm not gonna live like, I only got 10 years. You know, I'll live like, maybe I can get 20. Maybe I can get 30. <laughs> but if I get 10, great. <laughs>